haven't done a q a in a while and i asked you guys to ask me questions on instagram so we will get right into it i guess and like always some of these questions are just general questions for anyone to answer and some of these are directed towards me so i'm just gonna do a little mix of both i think how did you guys know you wanted to marry each other? I'm this way and I think Dylan is this way as well where we don't just date anyone. Prior to dating each other, we both only had one like serious relationship or like long relationship, whatever. So I think both of us went into the relationship with each other with the same intention of we're not just like dating for fun. And then as far as knowing that we wanted to marry each other, I feel like it sounds really unhelpful, but I literally just think when you know, you know. You know, we got engaged a little over three years into dating. I don't think a year into dating we were ready to be married. I don't think two years into dating we were ready to be married. I had some healing and self work to do and Dylan had the same and then we both just kind of reached that place where it was just a good time and it just felt right. I just really feel like it's a feeling. Rocky, do you believe in homeschooling kids or a normal school? I think it depends on where we're living at the time where we are having kids and sending them to school. As of now, I would want to homeschool or possibly private school, charter school, something like that. I mean, I think we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but we've talked a lot about homeschooling. We'll see. Do you prefer small puppies over big dogs? I love all animals. We live in an apartment. It's a lot easier to have a small little puppy versus like a Great Dane. So for right now, it, it is just like better for us that we have little Rocky. But in the future, I'm not like opposed to getting a big dog, but it's just easier for me to care for a smaller dog. Advice on trying to bond with boyfriend's family. Put your best foot forward. If A, it's not reciprocated, or B, it's not the relationship that you want. Just remember, you're only in control of yourself. I think too, it's super important, and I wish that Dylan and I had had this conversation earlier on in our relationship. It's very important to create boundaries. I've been talking so much about boundaries, but you need to establish boundaries with your in-laws or with other people. I mean, literally any relationship you have, there's boundaries, but you and your partner need to be on the same page as far as what those boundaries are. Otherwise, it's gonna be really hard to go forth in any relationship if you and your partner are not on the same page but as far as just the initial trying to bond with them they should like you and they should respect you simply because your boyfriend or girlfriend likes you and respects you and that's the bottom line is you don't have to be their best friend you don't have to have everything in common you don't need to hang out with them without your partner there at the least you should just be able to be cordial be friendly you know and they should just like you and want to get to know you simply because their child loves you and knows you. <laughs> Any tips on dealing with UTIs, BV, yeast infections, etc.? BV? What's a BV again? Bacteria, vagina, or what is it? Vaginitis? What does BV stand for? Bacterial vaginosis. Okay, so I don't think I've ever had that, but I've had a lot of UTIs and a lot, not a lot of yeast infections. I think I've had two yeast infections. <laughs> This is really a little bit TMI, but so UTIs, I used to get chronic UTIs. I would have like one UTI per every three months, which is a lot. It got to the point where my doctor wanted to put me on an antibiotic and UTIs are bad for you because if it's left untreated for too long, it gets into your kidneys. You can have like kidney failure, kidney infection, all that type of stuff. Once you get it, once you have a UTI, I would just say drink a lot of water and get an antibiotic. That would be my tips once you have it. As far as preventing them though, go to the bathroom. I think that's why I used to get them so much is, and I don't even talk, I'm not talking about sex. I'm talking literally, I would hold my pee in and just wouldn't want to go to the bathroom because I was lazy, like too lazy to go to the bathroom. Go to the bathroom when you have to go to the bathroom. Also go to the bathroom after anything happens and just drink a lot of water. However much caffeine you're drinking or however much other beverages you're drinking, 
drinking, you should be drinking double that with water. When you take a shower, I, like I feel like people think that they need to do like all this stuff down there. Do not put soap up your vagina. That'll probably give you a yeast infection because you'll be messing around with your pH levels. Oh, after you work out or sweat or go in the pool, shower, change your underwear, do not walk around all day with the thong that you wore to work out in, okay? You have to shower and you have to change that out. Also wearing a wet bathing suit around all day breeds a lot of bacteria, very gross, but just some basic hygiene and basic care is good. Advice for people doing long distance. I think that phone calls are super important. FaceTime is super important. Text as minimal as possible. I think that text can make things really impersonal. If you're long distance, I think actually talking to each other makes a huge difference. Plan activities ahead of time where you have something to look forward to. Having something on the calendar, I think that's important. And also just having mutual respect and understanding for what you guys are comfortable with when you're not together for example are you allowed to go out to a party without each other are you allowed to be do you know and I do air quotes with loud because I feel like people always get turned off when it's like allowed like oh is it your mom or dad like no but like you should respect your partner enough to like want to make them comfortable so I think really communication that's like my answer to everything is you just have to communicate you have to know how to communicate how the other person likes to be communicated to how did you know Dylan was the one slash that you were ready to be married. So kind of going back to the other question about this, I think it was just a feeling. I feel like we both connected on that level of friendship, intimacy, and just it just worked like it was working i think that at the time that we got engaged and now the time that we are engaged currently like our relationship was progressing in a way that like it was progressing it wasn't like going downhill and then also we just were both aware of things that we needed to work on individually to better ourselves and then by you know progressing our own growth and focusing on our own individual growth it helped us to grow as a couple together. Something on your bucket list? <laughs> I don't know, maybe this is boring kind of, but I really wanna go on one of those little boats at the Amalfi Coast, and I really wanna go to Greece. I have like a lot of traveling that I wanna do. I don't really know if that's like a bucket list, but there are a lot of places I wanna travel to. Favorite perfume? I really like Victor and Rolf. I think that's my favorite right now. And then there's also this other one, it's spelt C-E-L-U-I. I don't know how that's pronounced, but that one smells really good. And every time I wear it, people ask me if I'm wearing Baccarat Rouge. Is that how you say it? Can you give some advice on how to deal with in-laws who might not be the nicest? Again, boundaries and communication. You and your partner need to be on the same page. And then the boundary part of it is if they're not nice to you, you don't have to see them. Just how you would not be friends with someone if they were always cussing you out or screaming at you or crying at you or creating a big issue with you, you wouldn't be friends with that person. In the same way, it doesn't matter who it is. If someone is like causing you so much grief and pain and stress and they're not nice to you, you do not have to see them. Your partner should be able to understand and should be able to see my mom is not being nice to my girlfriend I love my girlfriend and I don't want her to be treated like that and then that's like kind of his job you know or if it's a girl you know it's her job to take it up with her mother or their mother whatever and say mom this is my partner you're not able to talk to her like that like you're not allowed to disrespect her I love her she is with me be nice like that's your partner's job to deal with his own mother. And then if she can't respect that, you guys don't have to see her. Like, okay, boundary's been set, line has been drawn. When you learn to be nice to me, when you learn to respect us as a couple, when you learn how to behave, <laughs> then you can re-enter our life, possibly. <laughs> but until then, have you heard of that weird complex? It's called like Jocasta complex. If you haven't heard of it, look it up. Moms with their firstborn sons, for some reason, there's like a weird, like the mom raises the son to like be like the husband <laughs> that she wants. There's just a weird thing with moms and the firstborn son, I think. 
and for some reason it's harder for men to kind of draw that boundary and it's also weird because you know as a child even if you're a man like you're still your mom's child so maybe you don't really realize what's going on until you're in a romantic relationship where your mom feels threatened <laughs> like you're taking my son away from me but it's like whoa you're not married to your son you and your partner need to talk about it and need to create boundaries because if you don't have boundaries and you don't communicate with your partner it will cause a wedge between you and your partner how old do you want to be to have kids i will be 26 when we get married and i always thought that between 26 and 28 would be a good time to have kids i think that it will just depend on once we're married we're just gonna feel it out we will know when we're ready to have kids but definitely within the next four years i would say between now and four years from now we will either be pregnant or have our first baby sooner than later but not too soon what's your lip combo okay recently i've been using this rms beauty i have these lipsticks they look like the tart ones kind of but i have them in literally like 15 shades and they're so good. I literally carry it around and then also Aquaphor, of course. I love my Aquaphor. How do you stay so fit? First of all, thank you. Second of all, I eat pretty healthy. I eat a pretty balanced diet and then also I do Pilates and go on walks. How long were you and Dylan together before you started living together? We were together for six months when we moved in together, but the only reason is because COVID happened. And so naturally it just kind of like happened where I wasn't in LA for school anymore. Dylan was like, why don't you just move in here? But if I were to give advice, I would wait longer. Thankfully me and Dylan were able to like work it out. Like we obviously are together and everything, but moving in with someone is a big deal and it's harder than you think it's gonna be. You get to know someone on a totally different level. So when you're six months into dating, it seems like a great idea to move in together because you're in the honeymoon phase, you're so excited and whatever, but it really expedites the process of getting to know someone like on a deep level so you know and in some ways that's really nice but in other ways it kind of cuts your like honeymoon stage shorter because you go from like he 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 my new boyfriend to like you use all the toilet paper it changes the dynamic which is not a bad thing but you just have to be kind of prepared for that what you eat in a day i was thinking maybe i could do like a what i eat in a day video that's like just like a day vlog of not me eating all day but like of what i eat if you guys would like to see a what i eat in a day video comment on this video and let me know. How many kids do you and Dylan want? We've talked about four recently. Dylan's been saying five or six. Did you ever lose hope on finding love? My hair is about to die. No, I don't think I ever lost hope on finding love only because I don't really think I care that much if I found love or not. After me and my ex-boyfriend broke up, I literally hated love. <laughs> I didn't care to find love. I really worked on myself and I really loved myself and hanging out with myself, being by myself, hanging out with friends, hanging out with my mom. Like I just focused my energy elsewhere, like into myself. So I just never thought about losing hope on finding love. Like I never was concerned about that. Don't lose hope on finding love. Just love yourself, put your energy into yourself and the right person who has put energy into themselves will come together with you and you will both be an unstoppable force of self-love, mutual love, and perfection. I switched locations. Sorry if the lighting is terrible, but my camera is probably gonna die again, so I'm gonna try to do this really, really quick and just try to knock them out as quick as I can. As a couple, do you and Dylan have a bank together or each of you is separate? Right now, Dylan and I have separate bank accounts. Our plan as of now is once we get married, we're gonna have one joint account and still keep our separate accounts. And then just have one joint one where we'll each put a certain amount of money in per month just to pay the bills or groceries, that sort of thing. How do you manage your money? <laughs> Great question. I don't. I try to save as much as I can. Right now, work has been slow, so I have been saving almost nothing, which has been very unfortunate. But I just, I always try to save as much as I can. I don't really shop that much, so I don't have exactly like a set schedule of how I budget or anything. 
I probably should, but budgeting or spending has never been a problem for me. So I've never felt the need to like restrict myself. Is once a week too little? And then in parentheses, sex. I think every couple is different. Every relationship is different. I think whatever works for you guys, you know, and also some weeks are busier than others. Some weeks you're feeling it more than others. I think it's very personal and I think it can change. So I'm gonna leave that up to you. How do you deal with overthinking and anxiety? Talking to my therapist has really, 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 really helped way more than I could have ever imagined or hoped for. I think everyone should go to therapy. I think that for some reason, and I understand it, but for some reason, other people feel uncomfortable sometimes when you express that you're anxious. And what I have found as someone who has very bad anxiety, it is so unhelpful to say that you're stressed or anxious or overwhelmed and then a person responds with, well, just don't think about it. Just try not to think about it. Just don't worry about it. Just don't think about it. Newsflash, I'm thinking about it, okay? So it's really important to know who you're able to open up to. Someone who is really good with their money, they live in a big house, they go on a nice vacation. You would maybe ask them for financial advice. And along the lines of that, you probably wouldn't ask a man who's been single his whole life for relationship advice. Whatever it is, in the same way, when it comes to your feelings, you have to be really aware of who you're opening up to and who you trust with your feelings. And also what I've learned is that I need to be really careful and intentional with my words and how I choose to express my feelings. For example, I used to come to Dylan with my feelings and he didn't really know what to do with them and that is not his fault. It's just, I wasn't really communicating what I needed from him. He didn't know what I needed from him. But now, you know, when I'm feeling anxious, I'm overthinking that sort of thing. I'll come to him and I'll be like, I just need you to listen to me. I'm overthinking. I just need you to hear me out. Do you think you and Dylan are gonna do a first look before going down the aisle? No, we are not. How do you balance sexy time? There's a lot of sexy questions on here. I think communicating both of your needs and your expectations to each other. Also being understanding, you know, if Dylan gets home from work and he's super tired, I'm not gonna be offended if he like wants to shower and go to bed. Communication, I'm telling you, communication is like the biggest thing for anyone ever. All right, we are in a new location yet again. My camera had to charge. I had to run some errands, but it's seven o'clock. Dylan's on his way home. I'm gonna start dinner soon, but I'm gonna finish up this video once and for all. I think that I left off on the one that was about balancing sexy time. And I kind of forget what I said, but I will just leave it at. Everyone has different sex drives. Everyone has different expectations. Hormones are fluctuating. There's a lot going on. People get busy, whatever. My advice would just be to communicate with your partner. What advice would you give for wedding planning? Remember that wedding planning is supposed to be fun. A wedding is a celebration of your love. It is not about how much money you're spending, how many people you're inviting. It's not about where it's at. It's a celebration of your love and you should not lose sight of that. And a lot of people have a lot of opinions and will have a lot to say to you about what they think is right or what they did or what they didn't do and what they wish they did. Bottom line, whatever you want, whatever you and your partner decide on, stay true to what you want. Pros and cons of living in OC. The pro, it's a bubble. The con, it's a bubble. <laughs> How do you get out of mental funks? When I am in a funk, I just feel it out. I ride it out. If I am sad, I cry. If I am mad, I vent. I just have really been trying to feel my emotions and not try to suppress them and not try to feel guilty about them and not mask them or fake them or anything. Feel your feelings. Also going outside, going for a walk, getting some sunshine, clearing your head. I think feel your feelings, but don't dwell on them for too long, but it's not a bad thing to feel your emotions. I think I'm gonna leave it at that. I think this video is gonna be about an hour long if I go any further, so. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is a little bit TMI and a little bit PG-13. Thank you for asking me questions. Please comment, like, subscribe. I love you all. I love you for supporting me and for being my friends, my internet friends, and I will see you next time. Thank you.